All right, staff, let's take a look at our preferences under Customize and Preferences. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go to General, and I've set my scene levels. Yours are probably going to be on 20, and I've set mine to 200. So if I hit OK, what that means is if I start manipulating objects and I hit Control Z, it will go back. And on the default, it will only go back 20 times, but now it will go back 200 times. So this is going to use your RAM, but it does mean, you know, if you go off on one and start creating things and you want to go back, you can press undo 200 times, which is pretty handy. So let's go back to the preferences. So make sure that's on. Another thing we want to look at is in files, just make sure auto back is on. I usually have it on free and in full time of 10 minutes. Yours might be default to five. Sometimes it kind of locks up when it's saving. But what this does is if you do crash max and say you, you've been building away and max closes for whatever reason or your computer shuts down, your, your 3ds max is always backing up versions of what you're working on. So you'll always be able to go back and find the latest modified one and open that up. And just one last thing to check is the gamma. So just make sure enable gamma is on. Um, I mean, if we turn it off, When we look at our materials, you'll see that they're really dark and not looking very realistic. Whereas if we turn Gabba on, hit OK, and open up materials, that's how it should all be looking. So that's just some initial setup just to make sure that we're starting out right. Next, let's take a look at the interface. So up here, we've got the main menu. I don't use this very much. I pretty much just use it for saving and um, starting new scenes. Sometimes I use it for grouping objects, but all in all, I don't really use it that much. Over here, we have the command panel. This I use all the time. I use it so much, I would recommend just click and uh, put and drag that out so that you can have more space to play with this. This really is the home of 3ds Max. This is where we're gonna create objects from. We're gonna modify them. You also got hierarchy, motion, display and utilities but these first two create and modify are what we're going to be using most and then here we have the viewports so this is where we see what's going on what we're creating and currently we have four viewports so we've got the front top and left and over here you'll see that we can actually change the viewport layouts which is kind of handy again i don't really use this toolbar very much i normally have it just on one viewport or four, but I'll show you how to do that later on. Next up, we've got the ribbon. The ribbon is up here. Click this button just to drop it down. So this is mainly just modeling tools, so we can go into that a bit later. And down here, we've got the time slider, which is for animation. And we've got the play button, stop, uh, move frame by frame. So the control is here. And we've also got how to keyframe it here. And um, you'll see that this this set of dialog boxes, they just move things around so we don't have to use the gizmo, which I'm going to show you in a moment. But these can be quite handy. And then in the bottom right, we have viewport navigation. So this is how we zoom in and out and move around. We don't need all of these menus all of the time. So what I'm going to do is just hide some of them because we're not going to be doing any animation for a little while. So you can just click and drag on these double dotted lines and pull them off. And you'll see, you can just close them here. So you can just start tearing them away and closing them. And even this ribbon, I don't really use. So we can click this button here, show ribbon. So we're going to close that for now. And you've probably got this view cube on, which I never use. So I'm just going to turn that off here, show view cube, hit apply and OK. So what we're doing is just minimizing the menus and any functions that we're not going to use. This will speed up max and also um, unclutter it a little bit. So let's take a look at the create panel, which is here. And we can click on geometry and in standard primitives, you'll see all of these objects that we can create. So standard primitives are just the really basic ones. So we've got box and sphere. So to create, an object you click on box click drag release pull it up 
and then click again. And you'll still be in create mode. So if I click and drag again, I'll create another box. So we right click to come out of that. And you'll see that as soon as we right click, a gizmo appears, which is this X, Y, and Z. And this is how we move objects around, which we're going to go through in a little bit. And when we select other objects, you'll see that the gizmo turns up. So that's how we move objects around. And if we go over to the modify panel, we can see the parameters of this. So if we want to change the length to something specific, like 600, we can type that in here. And this is how we can basically manipulate objects. You'll also notice back in the create menu, when you do create a new object, you can see it in the parameters when you're creating it. So you can do it here as soon as you've created the object whilst you're still in creation mode. So we right click and then you'll see we have to go over to modify. So go through and create some of these objects just to see what, what you've got and what you can do with them. So just play with the parameters as well. And once you've done that, you'll see that there's a lot more primitives here. So we've got extended primitives as well. So things like oil tankers, which are quite interesting shapes. And you've got a chamfered box as well, which is basically a box, but with soft edges. And this is how we get more realistic effects. I mean, this, this box already looks more realistic than this one. Um, it's got a few more parameters in modify that you can play with. Um, so this fillet is the thickness of that curve. I'm just using the middle mouse button here to zoom in and out, but I'm going to go through the viewport controls as well a little later. I just want to show you move and rotate right now. So once you've got an object selected, the easiest way to go to move, rotate or scale is to right click and you'll see move, rotate and scale here. So you can select here, that's what I generally do, but you can also use these options up here. You've got move, rotate and scale. So with the move tool, you move up and left and right using the gizmos. You can also do this in the other viewports and you can see it updating in the perspective view. And also if you want that back on the ground, I'm just going to right click here on these transforms and that's going to move that. So we can click and drag here as well. And if I right click rotate, you can see we can rotate the object in various ways. And Control Z is going to undo, so we can rotate this how we please. And then we also have scale here, so we can scale in whatever direction we want as well. You can see that we've got different opportunities to scale between the Z and the Y, for example. We can click and drag and scale here. And the same goes for the Move tool. If you hover over, you'll see that we can we can lock to one axis or two. So now we can move it around in both the X and the Z. And now let's take a look at the display modes. In the viewport, if you hit F3, you'll see it changes to wireframe. Hit it again and it will go back to shaded mode. And F4 will show the wireframe. So F4 I use constantly. Normally I will stay in standard mode. And you also get various types of shading here that you can flick through. I do normally keep it on default shading and you've also got stylized views here which can give some interesting effects but they're not really what we'll be needing. So earlier on I said the quickest way to navigate to move, rotate and scale was to right click. I was actually wrong. The quickest way is on your keyboard. There's keyboard shortcuts. Q will select, W will move, E will rotate and R will scale. So to maximize the viewport, you can see which viewport selected by this yellow box. So now we're in front view. So if we use perspective and we go down here, this will maximize the viewport. You can also use Alt W as the keyboard shortcut for that. So I spend a lot of time just in one viewport. To pan the viewport, just hold down the middle mouse button and pull that around. And you can scroll in and out to zoom in and out. And if you hold Alt and the middle mouse button, you can rotate objects. And whatever's selected 
will be zoomed in or rotated around. So that's useful to know when navigating a space. Now we can hit Z on the keyboard to zoom all, or with an object selected, you'll hit Z and it will zoom in on that object. I'm just using the mouse to zoom out. And then we have keyboard shortcuts to move views. So I've just hit L on the keyboard to go to the left view, F to go to front, T for top, V will bring up all the viewports. So I'm just going to hit P to go back to perspective view. And I'm just going to show you how you can select an object, right click and hide selection. You can also right click and unhide all. And you can also select an object and isolate it. So that's the only object available. You can do your work on it and then click it again and you'll be able to see everything. Another thing to be aware of is the unit setup. And I usually have mine on metric and millimeters. And this will just make sure that everything we create is created to a real world scale. Now let's take a look at how we can bring an image in as a reference plane. So this is from an exterior course. And we can see down here that the size of it is 2000 by 1088. So let's type that in 201188. So now we have the correct dimensions. And I'm just going to drag and drop that onto our object. And now we can see that that's come in. And you can press F4 to hide the wireframe and G to hide the grid. And we've moved selected. I'm just going to right click on each of these dialogues and now you can see that that's now center so if we go to the top view this is now in the middle of our scene if you can't see your texture on here you can hit m on the keyboard or click up here to open the material editor use the pick material from object click here and you want to show shaded material in viewport and if it's showing and it's quite blurry you can also go to the plus sign up here configure viewports you can turn up this quality and you can also change the texture maps to 2048 and hit apply and that should make everything basic quality. So I'm just going to click and drag roughly to the plans and let's make it 50 by 50 by 500. So we can always go to the modify panel and make changes to this We up here. We can name it, so let's name it new box. And here we can also change the color. And if you press Z, we'll zoom in on it. And you can add height segments here. So let's press F4 to see what that's doing. So this is how we create segments on an object. And then we can go to the top view and say we wanted to position this somewhere relative to the plans we can do that like this with the move tool selected we can also hold shift and click and drag to duplicate an object and we'll make that a copy and we can also rename it here so let's make a couple of copies of this box and i'm going to hold control and select the other two so we now have these three objects all selected what we can do is go to group, group, and we can make this the box group. And what this means is when we select it, it's all part of one group and we rotate and they all stay together. Another important thing when working with 3ds Max is saving your files. So you can go to file, save as, you can just call this intro test. We'll save that and it's important to save regularly and now it's also a good idea to save increments. So if we hit plus instead of save, what this is going to do is save a copy. So that's our original file and then when we hit the plus it got zero one and if I did it again it would have zero two. Now let's take a look at creating a camera. So we'll go to the create panel, we'll go over to camera and go to the top view and we'll choose physical. So now we click and drag. And if we go to the left view, we'll be able to see the height of our camera. So we're gonna to wanna to pull that up. 
So I'm just going to right click, go to move, and you'll see that our target is here. So we're going to want to pull that up as well. And if we hit C on the keyboard, and I'm just going to press F3, this is what the camera is seeing. So we can go into modify, and we can change the focal length. But normally 35 is quite normal, but down here we can dolly and zoom out the camera. And now if we press Shift F, this will show us safe frames. So if we hit render now, this is what's rendered. And we can see that the top of this box is quite near the top here, but in the render it's not. And that's because it's actually rendering a different aspect ratio. So Shift F turns on safe frames, which will actually show us what we're going to render. So we go to the render setup, we can change our output size here. So if we change this to HDTV and hit render, you'll see that's gone widescreen and you'll see that in the viewport with safe frames on, it's actually showing us what we will be rendering rather than what's in the viewport. So we can see the difference of this viewport and this render. Hi guys, I hope you found this video useful. This video is actually part of a larger introduction to 3ds Max course in which we go over cameras, lighting, materials, mapping and composition. So there should be a link in the description if you'd find that useful and also feel free to like and subscribe.